It was said that, uh, that George Washington was the president who could never tell a lie, and Richard Nixon was the president who could never tell the truth. Donald Trump is truly the president who can't tell the difference. Mark Shields grew up in a suburb about 10 miles south of my Boston neighborhood of Dorchester. Mark spoke for many of us when he wrote, in my Irish-American Massachusetts family, you were born a Democrat and baptized a Catholic. If your luck held, you were also brought up to be a Boston Red Sox fan. My brother, sadly, has uh, uh, done very well and become a Republican uh, because we were, we, were born, we were born Democrats and baptized Catholics, I think is the way that uh, it was put to us. Um, and, uh, you know, he's, he's very well. He's terrific. And I talked to him yesterday and uh, we, uh, we occasionally argue about politics, but not it, with great affection and, and admiration. Great affection and admiration is what everyone who knows Mark Shields has always felt for him. We can thank the legendary Meg Greenfield at The Washington Post for converting Mark Shields from a political campaign strategist to a clever and wise columnist. Meg Greenfield, I'd, I'd written a piece, I'd written a couple of pieces, op-ed pages, pieces at different times. I hadn't been in journalism, I'd been in politics. And she uh, approached me and said, would you like to write political editorials for the Washington Post? Uh, and I, uh, you know, not knowing any better, I said, yeah, yeah but I, those are unsigned. I've got to get some ego satisfaction. And she said, okay, you can write a once a week column. So I did that from 1979 through the campaign in 1980 and covered the whole campaign, which was great. Mark Shields glided into TV commentary, first on CNN's Capital Gang, and then for 33 years on the PBS NewsHour. I always turned up the volume whenever I saw Mark Shields on television. Television audiences don't talk back, but lecture audiences do. And Mark Shields was a star on the lecture circuit. Since it's a challenge, I mean, you've got, uh, you know, 45 minutes to, uh, to make them think, make them laugh. And that's the, that's the highest praise you can get coming out, is someone coming up and which occasionally happens said, you made me think and you made me laugh. Um, and boy, that's, that's high praise indeed for me as a speaker. No one made me think and made me laugh like, my, like Mark Shields. Mark Shields loved politics, not so much for the sport of it, but for the power of politics to help improve the human condition. As a journalist, he was always fair, but he was not shy about publicly admiring the politicians who merited his admiration. One was the Speaker of the House for Massachusetts, Tip O'Neill, who Mark Shields once said was a stranger to self-importance. Leave it to Mark Shields to create the perfect phrase describing Mark Shields, a stranger to self-importance. He was in awe of Mike Mansfield, the longest serving majority leader of the United States Senate in history, not because Mike Mansfield was a glamorous political star who delivered inspiring speeches. His admiration for Mike Mansfield begins with Mike Mansfield forging a birth certificate to join the Navy when he was 14, then joining the Army after that, then joining the Marine Corps after that. He goes on to become a professor of Asian history at the University of Montana, gets elected, serves 34 years in the Congress of the United States, majority leader longer than anybody in history. United States ambassador to Japan under both President Carter, asked to give the President Reagan, and when he dies, when he dies, written on his tombstone at Arlington, at his request, is Michael Joseph Mansfield, born March 16, 1903, died October 5th, 2001. Private United States Marine Corps. No majority leader, no ambassador to Japan. What you see in Mark Shields' admiration of others is a reflection of Mark Shields' values. After serving two years in the Marine Corps in the early 1960s, he was working in the Senate in 1965 when the crusade for the Voting Rights Act was the news of the day every day. The Democratic majority leader, Mike Mansfield, held a four o'clock press conference every day with the Republican minority leader, Everett Dirksen, in front of the minority leader's office, not the majority leader's office, which would be the normal protocol. Mark Shields tells the rest of the story as no one else can. 
after a couple of weeks of this, uh, the chief of staff of another Midwestern Democratic senator comes to see Mansfield's top guy and says, look, every day they have these meetings outside of Dirksen's office. Couldn't we at least a couple of days a week have it outside of Mansfield's office? So people would say the Democrats, the Democratic president's pushing this Democratic leader. Mansfield's guy goes to see him and says, Senator, this has been brought to me. I think it's a legitimate complaint. Could we do it? And Mike Mansfield turns on his staff person, and very close to him. He says, let me tell you one thing certain. You understand, last year, in 1964, the Republican Party lost its way on Abraham Lincoln's values of civil rights and with Barry Goldwater, who I happen to like, but he was absolutely wrong. And they suffered a terrible defeat. Anything that helps American people to see the Republican Party is turning, returning to the values of Abraham Lincoln is good for the Republican Party and it's good for the United States of America. I don't want the subject brought up again. Now that to me is leadership of just, you know, noble. Of all the politicians who Mark Shields worked with before becoming a journalist, there was no experience like working with Bobby Kennedy. I went to work for him when he ran for president in 1968 and was in Nebraska and Oregon and then in California uh, for the California primary where he won, of course, and, and then was uh, murdered. Um, and uh, I, I, just, I just felt about Robert Kennedy. There's two types that we're always looking for in American politics. We're looking for a conservative uh, with, with an obvious heart. Uh, with, with, who, you can say, gee, th th there's a real human quality to him. Uh, and then you're looking for a liberal uh, who's tough, who's got a real backbone. And I just felt that Robert Kennedy um, was the embodiment of that. I think he was, the, in many respects, the last tough liberal this country's had. Mark Shields left us on Saturday at the age of 85. His funeral mass today at the Shrine of the Most Blessed Sacrament in Washington, D.C., was standing room only. This is the last question. When was Mark Shields the happiest in politics? Um, boy, oh boy. You know, I, I, I said at the time, uh, in, in retrospect, you know, working, working for Jack Gilligan in Ohio, he was elected governor, he managed his campaign, and. Uh, Kevin White, when he was re-elected mayor of Boston in 1975, and I was involved in the leadership of his campaign, Robert Kennedy. When you're doing the Robert Kennedy thing, you know, in retrospect, because when, you, when you're doing what you enjoy doing, what you like doing, what you do well, and you think you're going to make a difference that's going to be better for the country, and especially for widows and orphans and people who don't even know your name, uh, I never will know your name. Uh, boy, that's, that's about as good as it gets.